we're going to animate a 8-bit Pokemon character using Photoshop and Flash. And you can find an image online of a, an 8-bit character. If you're at the Friends School, just open up the sh file I shared with you on Google Classroom. Pokemon's file. And uh, just find one of them that you'd like to use. So there's a stack here. Uh, get one. We get one um, that we can have maybe a tail moving would be good. This guy's got a tail. So you can do a screenshot or you can just do a, a cut out using the selection tool of the character. So we get our selection tool and just quickly grab that and go command C. We'll just make a new file by file new in Photoshop and we'll call it Pokemon. We'll give it a, a dimension of 80 pixels square. Should be fine. 80 by 80. And then just command V your character in, and you'll see there he's uh, or she's gone in over the top of that background. You can double click the background, hit OK, it's unlocked the background. You can delete the background, we don't need it. And what we're going to do is just get rid of that white layer around our character. And so that'll just clean up what we're importing into Flash. So you can use the selection tool to do that. And Oop, I nearly got it all. You can see where the selection tool has been active because it, there are marching ants around the edge there. That's pretty good. And we're just doing a basic delete. Go Command D to deselect. If you miss something like that little bit on the nose, you could use, let's just break, undock that and we'll get the we'll, we'll use our pencil tool so normally it's a brush tool here the pencil tool if you use the brackets right bracket left bracket you can paint in pixels uh, you can select the color you'd like just by using the eyedropper and you can then after you've loaded that color go to your pencil and click there's your missing pixel so um, now we're going to separate the tail and we're going to use our lasso and I'll zoom in and I'll just click and drag and that tail looks like we've got a leg here and we've got a tail that's about a pixel thick so what we'll do is we'll just go try and do it, be as accurate as I can this is a bit tricky. Uh, you could do it that way, and you know, do all the, you know, navigate your way around the pixels, and you have to go all the way around with that tool and back to the beginning, and that would select that area. It looks like it's done a pretty good job. It's approximated according to the edges of the pixels, which is great. What we really want to do is just cut it and put it on another layer. So I'll add another layer and I'll go Shift Command V and paste it in. Now I've got a few pixels that are semi transparent. So again, you might need to do a bit of work tidying up with the pencil tool. And that's all right, that's easy. And you can add some color and stuff that you'd like that you think might be missing or some of your own characteristics that you think will add to the add to the animation and so there's our tail and our little guy he's got to activate that layer let's get his leg sorted out all right all good 
So we're ready to export this character as a Photoshop file and then import it into Flash. So we'll just go file and export. We'll say sorry, we'll save it as a PSD file. Call it Pokemon. There you go. And it's a Photoshop file. So I'll hit save down here. Save. That's it. There is save down there, and I've saved it. Now I'll flip across to Photosh uh, Flash. So you, in Flash, you just need to create a new Flash file, and we're going to change the stage size. So if you click on the stage using the selection key here, this is this, I've just undocked the tools. It's basic selection tool, click on the stage, properties of the stage come up, the dimensions of the stage can be say, say, changed by double clicking or you can just drag them around. So, so yeah, it's easy just to double click and type in 80. 80, enter. Okay. So now we want to just import, file import to stage and we'll select the Pokemon Photoshop file, a .psd. It automatically recognizes separate layers and you just need to tick the ones you want. It converts them to flash layers, but they'll be, vec they'll be rasterized images, they won't be vectorized. Anyway, we'll hit OK. And it's at the right size because we knew we were working with an 80 square pixel format. Okay, now we need to just rasterize our images. Uh, you could animate them like this. Um, but if you'd like to rasterize them, uh, sorry, vectorize the image, it's going to work a bit more effectively for you. So I'll show you how to do that. Grab the tail and modify trace bitmap and change that to many corners I think it's set to normal usually and change that to pixels I think that might be also set to normal and then it will change that to a vectorized uh, file image format which means you know you've got this um, you know, mathematically created chunk of image and it works a lot better for us in flash so we'll do the same thing I'll lock them. I typically lock my layers I just find it easier I don't make mistakes that way so I'm just going to trace that bitmap off now and same thing all right now to animate our character, it's going to be very sensible to just convert the tail to a graphic symbol. So while we've got that body selected, let's just convert that to a graphic symbol. It's really easy. Just select it all. Just go, sh uh, go function F8 on a Mac and make sure you change that to graphic you can call that body and now the body is in the library it's added that and we'll lock that and go up that's our tail select it function f8 tail all right okay so we can animate our character and uh, we've got one frame on our timeline running at 24 frames a second. And our tail is going to be animated. So I'm going to hit function F5 and extend the frame count out to 24 frames. It's one second. I'm going to move the pivot point of the tail because if I rotate the tail, it's rotating around the middle right now. We want 
the pivot point to be at the location where the tail would normally naturally pivot, which would be where it meets the body, about there. So now if I hold my cursor up around the corner, see it pivot quite well. All right, so now I can add a keyframe here. Go function F6. I'll just move my tail around here. Uh, you see I've got a keyframe here with the tail position, original position, and then a keyframe here with the position I've moved it to. All right. And if I make another keyframe here, function F6, I can actually, if I want to, just control click, copy, frame, control click, paste frame. So I've got that same frame. So it's going from that keyframe to that keyframe back to the original keyframe. All right. I'll extend the body out. So it's playing for all those frames as well. Function F5. So we've animated our tail. And we've got a keyframe here for our tail in the middle, and then it returns to its original point. So it should be a seamless animation moving from here to here. Uh, if you'd like to create a classic tween, all you need to go is control click and add a classic tween, and you've got your tweened animation. So control click here again, and you've got your character's tail swishing backwards and forwards okay and the tail is slightly going off off screen uh, if you'd like to move everything you can open up this little edit multiple frames panel select all your frames by going command a and then just moving everything up and across a little bit and just turn that off I think that'll be fine so now to export a GIF you need to export a movie oddly enough and you need to change that to animated GIF it'll default it'll go by default to QuickTime I think change it to animated GIF and save it and Okay, now you should just be able to replay that. That's my old one that didn't work. Open with any browser. And there's your little character. Um, is pretty small because it's 80 pixels square. And that's your animated Pokemon.